Hi, I'm Gigi. And I'm Jeff. And we're living a simple life, either in Italy or in the United States. So what we thought we'd do for you today is welcome to Southwest Florida, barbecue and bourbon. And we're gonna have some recipes coming up for you and we hope you Very enjoy. Common. Today we're grilling. We're grilling some uh, pork baby back ribs and we've made old fashioned drinks and we're having a family day with a family meal. Okay, so today we're gonna show you what Florida or American ribs are like. So we've gotten three of these Smithfield ribs and they're about four to five pounds a piece. And Jesse the chef will tell you what he's done here. So we have two different versions of the ribs. The one that we're looking at now to the left has a dry rub and it's dry rubbed on both sides all the way. It's important when you cook these kind of ribs on the other side of this, there's a membrane underneath it that you have to cut out. If you don't cut that out, it doesn't allow any of your seasoning or flavor to penetrate into the meat. And what does your uh, rub consist of? Uh, this rub is a smoky mesquite kind of rub, uh, has cumin, black pepper, uh, salt, onion powder, uh, garlic powder, and a couple of other things that I can't remember at this time. Okay. Okay, and this one? Uh, this one, we're doing a simple seasoning on it. Um, it's actually this right here, funny enough, slap your mama, which is funny <laughs> as it is. Um, but, but the ingredients on it, if I can find them here, are literally just salt, red pepper, black pepper, and garlic. So very simple. Mm -hmm. um, don't do too much with that because this is going to be our ribs that we end up basting with barbecue sauce at the end. Okay. These ribs are for if you are trying to make for someone with some food allergies and maybe they can't have barbecue sauce or the, all that kind of a rub. We're gonna do these with some brown sugar, some cherries, cherry juice, and corn syrup. So Jesse, you're gonna barbecue these on a grill. How would you go about doing that? Uh, the method that we're using today is with the indirect heat. So we'll have our charcoal on one half of the grill and on the other side of the grill will be an aluminum tray with water in it. And this will allow for the meat to stay juicy as it cooks in. It creates a lot of moisture with the heat on the bottom with the water. So we'll do two hours with them over unwrapped over top of the water portion of the grill. Okay. And then we'll wrap them for another 20 to 30 minutes over the heat portion of the grill and then we'll unwrap them to char them at the end to get them to the consistency we would like. And when do you add sauce? Uh, for the ones that we're doing wet, we're going to do that at the very end. So in the last 10 to 15 minutes, okay. we're gonna baste and then rebaste and rebaste. Okay, sounds good. Bon appetit. Okay, so we went to the distillery. And we got St. Augustine. Bourbon. Okay. It's, it's a new company, it's only been there uh, about 10 years, about seven years, they've had the uh, distillery open for uh, tours and for purchasing and so forth. It's a very up and coming uh, operation that has quality, quality bourbon. And so what did you end up getting as a mix to that and what kind of drinks are we drinking? Okay, so we bought the bourbon and it came in this wonderful case. And along with it, comes their old-fashioned mix okay. for making the, the old-fashioned drink. Okay. So this is a combination that's been around for a long time. Uh, however, the St. Augustine distillery people made the mix all in a bottle. So you don't have to uh, go through, like a bartender, go through all the, com get all the components and put them in and it randomly mix it, mix right. it all together and hoping that you got the right proportions, which bartenders are usually pretty good at that. So they come out just fine. However, I know that you said there was one difference though, because yes. under the measurements. Okay, on the bottle, uh, it tells you to uh, mix the, the drink, four parts bourbon to one part old fashioned mix. Okay. However, we found that mixing it three to one rather than four to one is better for the taste for all of us. The, Four to one is, is a little too strong. Okay. A three to one is perfect. Okay. It, and what do you add to it? Well, we, we, put, uh, we try to put uh, a couple of cherries in the drink and uh, a little bit of the cherry juice, which of course is very sweet. So that takes that, that bite away from the bourbon and it makes a fantastic uh, cocktail. And I also see you have orange. Yes, uh, we usually take an orange peel and we rub the rim of the glass to get the orange oil on the rim of the glass. So when you 
put your mouth on it, you can taste it. We twist it up and put it in as a garnish. We use charcoal because charcoal gives you a much better flavor. And as you can see, the grill is going, a little bit of smoke coming out the vent. The temperature is a little over 400. Four. So we can see, we got two racks of ribs in there. We have a third one in the house. But the two that are cooking right here have been seasoned appropriately. In the bottom of the grill, you'll see an aluminum foil tray filled with water. That keeps the moisture in the meat and makes a, uh, a good finished product. So I'm going to close that down and let it continue to cook. It's a nice steady fire and within a couple of hours they'll be done and very tender and moist. Ooh, that looks good on the bottom there. Nice and seared. So you can turn it over. I usually keep it on the one side, but in this case, because of, we got a higher temperature, I'm gonna end up doing a little bit of this action so we can get both of the sides looking like this. Because that's how I like mine. well above that right now so we're gonna keep it open okay let that flame hit it cook that up a little bit So what are we doing right now at the moment? I'm gonna wrap these up so that we can let them cook a little bit more internally. So this will raise the internal temperature by having an aluminum foil around right. it and not, so and not the letting it get the direct heat from the flame and the coal. Okay. And I know we mentioned it earlier, but you have the container of water down in the bottom next to the fire, so you get that moisture uh, humidity factor up to help keep the, uh, the moisture in the meat. And as you can probably hear, it's, there's some thunder and lightning coming in as we're cooking. So there's gonna be some rain here in a second, and we might have to backtrack into the garage Okay, so what are we doing right now? We check the temperature, see what our internal temperature is at. Got the meat thermometer in there and uh, checking to see uh, if the inside is done. Is the appropriate temperature? I think it's 185 degrees. That's yep. correct. We're right, right where we need to be. We, okay. need, we need about 10 more minutes of this and then we're gonna start charring it. I'm gonna move the uh, ribs up on the top shelf just to hold them out of the way and we're going to put a little bit more charcoal in there to maintain the heat a little while longer continue the even heat the cooking process so added a few more charcoal so. This is a Reynolds wrap, heavy duty aluminum foil, which in Sicily, they have aluminum foil, but it's extremely thin and it's very hard to work with if you want to do something like this. It tears very easily. This is the heavy duty Reynolds wrap. It's, it's much thicker and more durable, so you can use it in a working environment like this. Okay, so you've taken the ribs out, mm -hmm. the, the ones that are just seasoned so yep. that uh, they don't have any extra spices or extra additives or whatever so that Christian who has allergies food allergies so that he can eat these so we did this rack separately in the oven 
Okay, so what, what are we doing now? I'm gonna unwrap these and get them on some direct heat, start basting them with the barbecue sauce for the ones that we're gonna use sauce on. For the other ones, we're just gonna get them cooked so they're nice and crispy on the outside. We can see how nice it's done on the bottom with the direct flame, they look great. Top looks great. these guys. It's a little thicker. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. We've got our barbecue sauce here. And that is Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue. We like the sweeter stuff, personally, so we're gonna do it up with that. And you're pretty much going to, what's the process here? You're gonna turn them over and just kind of sear that barbecue sauce into the meat? And I'm gonna do it multiple times. Okay. Because it actually starts to build up uh, layers of the sauce that's a little more cooked, and it becomes a great texture very pleasing when you're biting into the piece of meat and the way that it uh, pulls. So we're gonna continue to slather our ribs in barbecue sauce. This is Sweet Baby Ray's Honey. because we're big fans of the barbecue sauce, so we're gonna put a pretty good amount on there. Definitely wanna make sure we cover it all. Also gives us a little moisture aspect. Boy, does that look good. Okay, so we're checking the temperature again on the... Uh, the other side of the ribs. We did the left ones that okay. we're doing with the wet. Now we're checking the dry rub. Okay. Just seeing where we're at, making sure we're good on both. Yeah. Look at the way that it caramelizes the barbecue sauce when you get it up to the heat there. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. Got the smoke ring going on there on the outside. Looking absolutely wonderful. Beautiful. Barbecue sauce, great combination. Yeah. Just really nice, so we'll just do a few ribs here. Hit them with our delicious sauce. Because I like my ribs with no sauce, just these seasoning the dry rub is just ample for me so that end will be for Gigi she likes to have a little sauce on her ribs go, go second coat yeah, yeah all right what, second now coat. what are you doing now Justin? we're going to do a second coat on this because I, we really love the barbecue sauce and in order to create a nice sticky layer we've got to keep it on there and then apply it directly to the heat and you would think that it would just drip off and a little bit does but most of it stays right attached to the meat and it creates an awesome texture. Yeah, easy. How quick that does that, just caramelizes it, sticks yeah. it right on. This one's gonna get over there before I flip it. It's looking right now. It's looking I'm happy. that it would just tear right open and it just look like some beautiful white juicy meat and these have been cooking for how long um, we've had them on uncovered for about an hour and a half and then 
covered for about 30 to 40 minutes, and now we're back off getting that final char on. All right, so we're doing a probably a final temperature check, yeah. correct? Yeah, we're just making sure we're where we need to be. Although we, we do look very good. Smoke ring all the way through there. You can see it, it almost looks red, but it's not. That's actually just from the heat and the smoke and everything creating that crust. Getting ready for the third coat. That's two coats of barbecue sauce. Now we're gonna do number three. Layers. Look how nice that looks. As you can see, how nice and cooked that is on the inside with that little bit of a char mm. on the outside. Mm. Wow. That is good. Wow. Yep, we're looking like we're done here. Look how nice that looks. Very juicy. Beautiful. You can see that they're cooked through and through, yet they're still juicy and tender with that nice crispy outside bark, as we call it. We'll let you know how they taste in just a few Oh my minutes. gosh, that looks so good. Just wait until you get it out. Yum. Like Bourbon and ribs. That's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay. gosh, this looks so delicious. We're all like in ecstasy here <laughs> eating our ribs what do you think jeffrey well we haven't had them for a while and uh you know we finally had the opportunity to do it so uh, we took advantage of the day and uh you know we went and got the ribs fresh and uh, our son jesse and nicole uh, cooked the meal so we're all able to uh, enjoy what is uh, looks to be scrumptious mm. all right mm. bon appetito oh, jeffrey what do you think are you disappointed no. <laughs> Have you had barbecue like that in a while? No. Beautiful. And it is just outstanding. And we Great haven't had job, this for some time. My son <laughs> has got this down to a, a pretty good science. Yes, he and does. He's, he's pretty good at it. And uh, I, I just, I applaud him for being diligent with the grill, watching the temperature, keeping the water in there, keeping the heat up where it's supposed to be, checking it with the thermometer so there's no danger of undercooking the meat. So how long total cooking time? Two and a half, three hours? Yeah, about two and a half hours. Wow. I'll start to finish and so with uh, everything. Yep. Yeah. Wow. If you're gonna slow cook, you need a nice bed of coals, and so you need the charcoal. And we hope you enjoy. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.